Hi, I'm Daryl Monroe from Beyond the Numbers, and we're about transforming the future through leadership. And today I wanted to share a story with you about optimising a shutdown. A shutdown is operated often in large organisations, processing organisations, etc., mining organisations, where they need a, a specific time period where they shut down the plant and do all their catch-up maintenance to avoid future breakdowns that are unplanned. And so it's a, it's a normal, regular occurrence. And uh, everyone works together to, to achieve that shutdown outcome in the, in the most timely manner. But I was on this operation at this time and I was working with leaders doing uh, real-time coaching in the workplace from supervisor up to manager level. And we're getting some good progress from that work and in terms of them doing things differently and getting better results. So that was an exciting piece of work for myself and uh, one of the things I did there was an opportunity to observe a number of these leaders who were going through the coaching in a specific uh, um, setting, and that was in the planning phase for a two-week shutdown that was coming up. So I sat in on that meeting and I observed it, and I was very impressed actually because all of the teams, they, they, had, they rocked up and they went through their plans in, in detail, it was well thought through, good interactions um, throughout. So. At the end of it, they ended up with their uh, two-week plan on, 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 a, on a wall, if you like, of what they were doing. And so it was, it was quite good. And I, I went away and reflected on that in terms of what I observed of the leaders and what I could leverage from that in helping them to become the leader they deserve to be. And at that point then, uh, on a regular occurrence, the general manager would, would say, Daryl, come in and have a chat with me, give me a heads up and how it's all going. And so during this conversation, uh, I, I gave them a heads up on how the coaching was going, etc., and what was going well, not so well, what I planned to do differently to get better results. And then he said to me, because he's a pretty smart GM, this guy, and he says to me, so what else, Daryl? And I, I thought about that and I thought, well, one of the things I had observed was being part of this planning process was, and I shared how well the planning sessions went and how each team was well prepared. They obviously had done this lots of times and they'd gone through and, and developed their plan. But when I left that meeting and I was reflecting, what I thought was I didn't see a lot of evidence of how they were going to integrate it all because they're all competing for the same space, if you like, where the shutdown was taking place and often competing for the same resources like cranes and other, other equipment to be able to do their business. Uh, so, so that was one of the things that um, I picked up on. And so this shut was a two week shut. So in the conversation, the GM asked me a lot of good questions and what came out of that was a recommendation that the GM, general manager run a follow up session where he got those that group together again and, and gave some context and talked about are we sure that we have fully integrated our plans? So we've got good individual plans, but have we optimised the shutdown period through good integrated planning? So he asked me to come along and observe, and I sat in on that session, and the outcome was by setting the right expectations and context for that, for why they got them together again, they, the, the group really got into it and, and so they went back to that whole board, that whole wall that they had their plan and they talked through it but this now was a different type of conversation. It was talking about how they would get access to certain areas where other people wanted to be in that. So it was multi-leveled. So in some cases they couldn't do a particular task because there were people working above them and so that was putting people at risk. So how else could they do that? So sequencing become really critical. Now the really, uh, to cut the story short, what happened was they, they went through and did a more integrated way of working together. So they did it in a very proactive way and very, they demonstrated a lot of willingness to get it right. The real fun part was at the end of that planning session, they had basically, in their plan, had reduced the, the duration by a day and a half. That was the expectation as a result of that integration. So everyone was pretty, uh, pretty uh, stoked about that because we're talking about millions of dollars up for stake. So what, so what actually happened in reality? Well, they went out there and they did the shutdown 
and as a result, they didn't actually achieve their day and a half, but they did. They reduced the typical time it took them to do that shutdown by 26 hours. So pretty much a good full day was saved over normal. So with a bit of encouragement, the general manager got everyone back again and acknowledged that, and acknowledged that they did it safely. They had no incidents and no zero harm for the whole shutdown period where everybody's working long hours and working closely together, that was managed really well. The other thing was acknowledging that they, even though they had targeted a, a day and a half, they'd actually managed to save 26 hours, so great, that was a significant saving. But the interesting thing was, everybody was really excited and had ideas about how they could even do better next time. And so the general manager uh, leveraged all that and encouraged people to say, well, when we come to the next planning session, let's let's leverage off the review of what we did well and all these ideas bring them forward make a note of them now bring them forward so when we do the next shutdown period we'll challenge ourselves to do even better and so that's one of the ways of optimizing shutdowns the the more effective we can become the more we integrate our plans and the way we work as leaders can have a huge impact on getting the results that will actually astound you. So I encourage you to go into 2020 thinking about this type of thing and see what you can do to influence a different way of doing things, a smarter way to get a better result. So we look forward to your successes in the future and we'll catch you next time.